Okay, this video is going to be covering quadrilaterals and their unknown sides and angles. Just how to figure out what those missing angles and sides are. So the main concepts you need to remember, angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. No matter what, any quadrilateral, the interior angles will add up to 360 degrees. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Congruent meaning having the same measurement. Any two sides opposite each other are going to be the same measurement. Opposite angles of parallelograms are congruent. The opposite corners of a parallelogram have congruent angles. Isosceles trapezoids have consecutive angles congruent. Consecutive meaning next to each other, one right after the other. Two on one side are congruent, two on the other are congruent. All right, so we have this first figure. We need to make sure we understand this uh, symbol, these symbols in the language here. If the measurement of angle C equals 105 degrees, what is the measurement of angle B? Uh, let's go ahead and write in what they've given us. They've given us that angle C is 105 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and write that in there. Now, since they've already given us the symbols here, this is going to be real easy. If this double arc and double arc are marked the same, that means this is also 105 degrees. Now let's, we don't know what angle D is, but we know it's the same thing as angle B. So let's call both of those N, N degrees. Now we already know that the four angles of any quadrilateral are going to add up to 360. So let's take what we have here and just write it out. 105 plus 105 plus N plus N equals 360. And just these are the four angles, and it adds up to 360. Now we're going to do what's known as regrouping like terms. 105, 105 are both constants. We can put those together. N and N, instead of saying N plus N, we can just say 2N. So an easier way to write this would be to say 2N plus 210 equals 360. My N and N made the 2N. My 105 and 105 gave me the 210. So now to figure out what n is, we're just going to treat this like an equation. We're going to subtract 210 from both sides, and then we're going to divide both sides by 2, and we're going to get n equaling 75. Well, if n equals 75, then angle B is 75. The measurement of angle B is 75 degrees. We'll go ahead and move on to another one. If, so we've got this new quadrilateral over here. If the measurement of angle E equals 84 degrees, what is the measurement of angle G? And then it's also asking what is GF measure? So we'll have to figure that out. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out the angle part first. Let's fill in what we know. This is 84. Now this, I've got these markings here, so I see one pair of parallel sides and then two sides the same. This is an isosceles trapezoid. So that means also this angle is 84. And then we don't know what these are, but we know that they're going to be the same because they're consecutive, they're next to each other. So we could go ahead and, this is a lot like the other problem. We're just going to add up our angles, 84, 84, N and N, and they're going to add up to 360. We're going to do the same thing like we did before. We're going to regroup the like terms. N and N make 2N, 84 and 84 make 168. Now, to solve for N, we're just going to treat it like a uh, regular equation. We're going to subtract 168 from both sides, and we get 2N equaling 192. Then we divide out the 2, and we end up getting 96. So N is 96 which also means that angle G is 96 degrees. Now we need to figure out the next part. It says, what is side GF measure? Well, side GF has the same single mark as side DE, and they told us DE is 8 centimeters. Well, that also means GF is going to be 8 centimeters. All right, moving on. So we have this figure over here. Let's read the questions. If measurement of angle W is 45 degrees, what is the measurement of angle Y? 
And then also it says solve for x. Okay, that's a new, new thing they're throwing at us. Let's go ahead and fill in what we know. We've got measurement of angle W being 45. And they're asking about angle Y. Well, let's look at the markings on this picture here. These two sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel. This is a parallelogram. So if this is 45, this is also going to be 45. Angle Y is 45 degrees. We actually don't have to do any calculations here. If you really understand your quadrilaterals and that opposite angles are the same in a parallelogram, you're done for this one. Angles W and Y are opposite from each other, and this is a parallelogram. Opposite angles are always congruent. So now we're going to solve for X. If you look at the picture, 2X is being next to this side ZY, and WX is next to this 13. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, so they're going to have the same measurement. 2x is the same as 13, so we can go ahead and write down 2x equals 13. To solve for x, we're going to divide out the 2, and you're going to get x being 6 and a half, 6.5. Moving on. The measurement of angle B. What is the measurement of angle B? Well, opposite sides are parallel. This is a parallelogram, but it also has a 90 degree angle down here, which means that everything else is 90. So if a parallelogram has 190 degree angle, then all the angles are 90. Angle B is going to measure 90 degrees. So 90, 90, 90. They're all going to be 90 degrees. Now let's solve for X. We have side CB and side DA. They're opposite each other, and in a rectangle, opposite sides are congruent. So we can just say 3x is equal to 18, and then you can just divide out the 3. So in this problem, x works out to 6. All right. That's about it. I hope this helps. Best of luck to you.